Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Q&A series. If, for, as a reminder, send your questions to KeithBallardQuestions at gmail.com. So, we're playing Downwell today. It's uh, another one of those, like, randomly generated arcade roguelite style games. That's the big, hot, popular thing nowadays. In this game, what you do is you fall down a well. That's why it's called Downwell. <laughs> uh, you, you have thruster jetpack things on your feet that shoot bullets. So... The, your your double, triple, and so on, whatever jump, is the same thing as your gun. You do both simultaneously, and so your main thing is you shoot stuff that's below you, and if you die, you start the entire game over, and you can die very quickly. That whole general arcade-y, like, tr keep trying again sort of game. It's a neat idea. Meant to play it at some point, never really got around to it, and I'm like, well, this is perfect candidate for, like, a standalone, like, let's shoot the shit for a while. Also, might do a let's try with Andrew sometime, I don't know. Might be there might be redundant exposure to downwell at some point. Uh, anyway, though, first question is from Sozny. Uh, now that let's playing has become your full-time job, how do you prevent yourself from burning out by obligation to play video games every single day? Even for me, who loves to play video games only casually, there are times when I feel like I need to force myself in order to finish what I have started. Besides the obvious fact that playing video games is now your means of living, what drives you to finish games? Uh, that's definitely part of it, in all honesty. By the way, this is the jumping part. So I jump in the air and I go, -da 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 -da, and then when I land, it reloads. So you can only do that many shots in a row. I've never played it before, ever. So I don't know if I'm going to be even remotely good at this game. So, um, one thing is that you talk about how you play games casually on some level, and that is not to be ignored necessarily, because, uh, I definitely have always played games fairly often. So... I've probably never been necessarily a casual user, necessarily. Uh, but yeah, I've definitely had my fair share of experiences where I'm like, uh, and like, that's a weird lack of motivation when I'm thinking about playing video games just in my own free time back in the day. Uh, part of that was like, I... One of the biggest things is actually like, I'd have trouble picking a game to play, oftentimes, when I was having a particular day of like, let's go play a game. I, I feel like playing a video game, I think I feel like playing a video game, it's hard to tell. At times, oftentimes it's maybe less that you feel like playing a video game, but more that you just have a habit of playing video games. So you're like, I should play a game now, is just a thing that comes to mind, and then you can't pick a game. I've had plenty of days of sharing a, staring at a shelf and being like, what do I do? And then opening my Xbox Live on my 360 and like going through my list of, of downloaded games and also being like, I don't know if I want to play any of these things. I can't make up my mind, what do I do? Uh, so that is somewhat alleviated by the fact that I'm doing- so that I guess the side room we get loot. I have a laser now. Oh yeah. I have a thing that only shoots three times now. That's in that's interesting. So different clip size, different attack type. Interesting. So, I'd have, th I'd have that kind of experience of like, back in the day of not being able to pick what I wanted to play necessarily, which is not always easy to get past. And so one upside of having it be my job is that there's an obligation to it, especially since I've just decided that generally, the most of the time I do want to finish what I play. Uh, so, like, that means that for long chunks of time, I don't have to make a decision. Uh, I'll just play the game that is, that is scheduled to play for that day, and it'll be it'll sometimes be, a, like, a few weeks before I even have to pick another game. The upside of that being that I spend so much time not being able to pick what my next game is going to be because games take time to finish, that by the time the next game comes up and it's time to finally pick a new game, I will then have hit a point where it's like, oh, well, now I have, uh... I've, I've, I've had so much time to think about what game to play next that, like, the decision's been made several times over. I will often have, as you guys have seen, like, a list of future games I want to play sometime. And, uh, that'll only grow and, like, I'll become more and more laser-focused over time and more and more games that I specifically want to play next time I get a chance to actually choose what I want to play. So, it's actually made, it's made picking what games I want to play surprisingly easy. Let's look at this real quick. Uh, more upgrades to choose from and gain hit one hit point. Dead bodies gain health or 10% discount. Consume some dead bodies to gain health is pretty neat, but more hit points is also pretty good. Let's try that. Here we go! So as far as how do I get around with playing games all the time, honestly, I've always been able to play video games a lot. I mean, I've, I've had... I've been hooked to stuff like World of Warcraft and like I've... I mean, I've, I've, even when in school, like, it's relatively normal to just spend a fairly large chunk of my free time just playing video games, and now that my transitioning to games being my job has actually been not that hard, it helps that- oops, I got found took damage. 
It helps that I already have a penchant for playing longer games, I suppose, which means that I've already gotten used to the playing longer stretches and stuff like that. Instead, the more of the issue becomes a stamina thing of just like, how long can I continue going on a given day, for example, recording and talking and stuff like that. And that's a thing you work on of subconsciously, I suppose, because uh, for the longest time, I couldn't just play all day. Uh, it used to be that I would I would uh, go meet up with, with uh, Andrew because we used to record sad games and only sad games. And I didn't have this channel. Uh, I'd go meet up with Andrew to record and like we'd play for like an hour and we'd already be like worn out on Let's Playing and stuff like that. And we just couldn't do any more of it. Like it's just like we had to, we'd have to take a break and come back later or something. And like it, it that that was like an issue. And nowadays that's just gone. Like I've just done it a lot. So like. There's just like, I guess you build up a stamina for it. It's really weird to think about the concept of stamina for just like sitting around and talking and playing a video game, but for on a weird level, like that kind of is a thing. Uh, and you just work it up over time. It's a little hard to explain because it's not like it's an, it's an exertive process, but it's just like it's a mentally stimulating thing and that can be mentally exhausting. I guess it's kind of, it'd be kind of like, I suppose, how people play puzzle games and might have to stop playing a puzzle game for a little while and take a break or something, I guess is the general idea or something. I think. Because <laughs> that was definitely a thing. But yeah, nowadays I can play for long stretches of time, and Andrew can play long stretches of time, and I go to Andrew's once a week, but we will record... Lately what we've been doing is we record uh, Demon Souls for a bit until he can't take it anymore for that particular day, because not because of not being able to record anymore, but because he just doesn't have more patience for playing more Demon Souls. And then at that point we transition to doing a Let's Try or two, and then we move on to our current ongoing series that we're recording that you guys will be seeing in the near future, hopefully when we finish it. I'm getting... I don't know how to fight... I'm bad at fighting those guys, apparently. Uh, and we'll just go all day. I'll get there, like, just after noon, and I'll be leaving at, like, 10 o'clock, and I'm like, wow, we were just at this all day, weren't we? Pretty balloon. What? I don't even know what some of these things do. Huh. Ooh, caused a bolt... a bolt to shoot up. Neat. Bullet casings deal damage. Also neat. Let's try that. I'm gonna die soon. I'm not necessarily good at this game. It's it is it is it's enjoyable though, kind of twitchy, fun zone out thing that you could I could see yourself just mindlessly playing this game over and over again for long stretches of time, and then eventually being without even realizing it, and getting really good at it. <laughs> like wow, I got really far, which is what happened when I played uh, Chase the Sun on the on this series. Actually, is I was like wow, I got really far, like further than I've ever been before, because I've just been vamping and hanging out. Uh, so generally, I've never had I've never had a ton of burnout on video games in my life. So I've never really had to deal with that concept very much, so... Uh, I hadn't really had to worry about that idea. It, so really the closest thing to burnout for video games has been what I said earlier, which is the idea that like I'd have trouble picking what to play on a given day, and I'd have trouble finishing a game because I... I think I've heard... I've, had, I've, had, I've talked multiple times about the idea... Just w during Let's Plays even, the idea comes up periodically is this, this idea that I would like pick up a game, and then I would just like play it once or twice, then I just one day would just stop going back to it. Just this phenomenon that is not part of my current gaming experience, but used to be what happened all the time. Uh, and that's just a thing that would happen. It's like, there's no motivation to continue, and sometimes I just wouldn't feel like it, because there's a certain element of video games feeling like work. Like, not like work, like, oh man, what a tedious thing, but just like this, like, you have to... There's like, you have to get motivated to play video games sometimes, because they're an active experience. It's like how a lot of people don't finish horror games because a, a horror movie is a passive experience, but a horror game is an active experience, and you have to actively force yourself to continue forward in this thing that is a negative experience, which is why a lot of people don't finish horror games, or Dark Souls. <laughs> um, so that kind of thing is speaks to part of the reason of why a lot of people don't finish games in general, and why I often finish games is just you have to actively keep coming back and then keep f pushing forward. And so, for two different reasons, uh, Let's Playing has helped me finish games more often. Because one is that I have motivation to finish stuff now because there's like other people counting on me on some level to finish the thing I started. So that outside motivator leads to me finishing stuff that I may have not finished otherwise. Not even through active dislike, but just sort of a passive ignorance. Or not ignorance, but like me just going on to ignore the thing over time by just like, eh, maybe I just would drift away. Because I don't have a thing drawing me to specifically finish it. And it's easy to pick games to play next because I only get to pick a new game every two weeks or so, practically, or every week or two weeks. It varies heavily. And by the time it's time to pick a new thing, I will have thought about it considerably by then because I've been thinking about what to play next for a while now because I've been unable to play the thing I want to play next until I finish the previous thing. 
So things have been working out fairly well. I will say that the victim of, uh, let's see, blocks will shoot out of bullets when destroyed. That sounds pretty cool. I like that. Uh, one thing about doing Let's Plays as much as I do, uh, back when I played, uh, just did sad games with Andrew and nothing else, and it was only like one or two videos a day, I would play video games constantly in my free time. Now that I'm doing it myself, on my own, and I, and I play a lot of videos per day. Ooh, this is interesting and new. I would love to heal, but I can't because I screwed up. Let's just go for this then. That's all I can do. So now that I've, uh, picked up things significantly and I do a lot of, uh, videos per day and I constantly make videos and it means I'm constantly playing, I don't necessarily burn out while I'm doing it, but I do have a reduced drive to play video games when I'm not doing videos, uh, to the point where, like, I just haven't been playing video games. And it's not even- and I think that even has less to do with the fact that I am burned out on video games and more that, like, I'm slightly- I'm slightly burned out on video games, not like not totally, but just like I'm exposed to it a lot, but there's other things I would like to do. So like, I'll be like, uh, in a situation where, oh, is that going up? What was that thing I just did? I don't know what that was. I thought I saw something. Anyway, uh, I'll spend all day playing video games, so then I'll be like, well, I don't really want to play video games now, not because I'm actively disliking the idea of playing video games, but more because I could do something else with that time. So, I'll find myself choosing to do other stuff with my time just because of how much time I spend playing video games. So I'll go on to play, like, uh, then instead of playing stuff, I'll watch, I'll binge stuff on Netflix, or I'll catch up on shows, or read, or go to the movies, or, like, leave the house and stuff like that. Like, I'm more inclined to do that, do anything besides video games in my free time because of the video game itch being consistently and fully scratched in the process of making the videos, that it's unnecessary to continue playing video games whenever I'm not recording at that point, is just the general consensus. But yeah, it's never been that much of a struggle to continue. And uh, if the, the, the games that do become a struggle to continue are the ones that you guys are probably kind of aware of, which is because they're the ones that are more likely to be canceled. Those are the rare cases where it does become like an ordeal to continue forward. Because uh, there's two types of negative experiences from a Let's Play perspective that can happen, and one of them I'm cool with moving forward with, and the other one I'm not cool with moving forward with, is, and that is that, uh... One of them is when the game is bad. Well, like, it's interesting that the game is bad. If I'm interested in why the game is bad, then I love pushing forward, because talking about a bad thing, and playing a game I don't like to discuss th what I don't like about it, and, and stuff like that, either for comedic effect or critical effect, because there's... I kind of go into... I'm in do two different modes, oftentimes, between... Do it, playing bad games with Andrew versus bad games with myself. Like, me playing anime of Gate of Memories and going on long rants alone in a room versus, like, playing Sonic the Hedgehog with Andrew and ha just talking shit about the game constantly. Uh, those are two different negative experiences about the game being bad, but specifically in an entertaining or interesting way, or at least something that I find interesting to discuss. So if I can find a game to be negative in an interesting way that I think is worth discussing, then I can still continue forward. But when a game is either a bad game in a really, really boring way, or it's a, or it's not even necessarily bad, but a negative experience to, to record at some point, that's when it finally becomes a grind. And that's part of the reason why a game like Darkest Dungeon gets cancelled, is like, I don't think Darkest Dungeon is actively bad. I think that it has some pacing issues that I don't really, that I'm not really down for, and I think it was better paced in its early access edition than it is in its final version, where the first one was, it, it went from being a relatively pa uh, well-paced game, frankly due to its lack of content, then eventually became a, a grindathon nightmare thing that's designed to consume all of your time, which is not a great thing to let's play because you're essentially at some point just performing the same actions over and over again and not really having anything new, new to talk about. So like, the, the old version of me that would have played a game like Diablo 2 all day, or World of Warcraft all day, could, that guy could totally experience Darkest Dungeon and have a grand old time, but I don't know if he could Let's Play it either, because talk, trying to do a Let's Play of a game where you're just doing the same actions over and over again, and you're already 139 episodes in, which is how far I was in, which is over 70 hours, uh, at that point it's really hard to keep going with the game from a Let's Play perspective, and that's when I start burning out, is when sheer repetition starts setting in, or there's nothing to talk about, and I'm not having fun. Uh, if I'm not stimulated from a le from a commentary perspective or a gameplay perspective, and it's just becoming a grind, that's when the series is likely to be cancelled, because I just, like, can't 
keep going. And so that's, so that is when burnout happens. But outside of that specific context, it's really rare. I can generally play games for hours every day and it's not really, it doesn't really phase me. And I can find things to talk about as we go. And I can criticize a game and enjoy criticizing a game. Like, how do I put it? Like, I don't like Mass Effect Andromeda at all. I like Let's Playing Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> like, I look forward to my sessions with Andromeda to, like, just watch the train wreck. And that's fine. And I don't get burned out even on doing that. Even if it sounds like I'm, like, exasperated by the game. It's like a different kind of exasperation that's hard to explain, but I've been slowly trying to explain it over the course of some of these Q&A videos in a way. And it's, let's see, shooting dead bodies cause them to explode. That's neat. Stopping enemies causes a blast. Lift off. Here's about lift off a little bit. Uh, let's try the explosion one. But yeah, that's the general idea, I suppose. That I don't really have to worry about getting burned out too much. And, uh... I don't really usually feel like I have to force myself to play a game. I will admit there are sometimes days where... I think the biggest case of feeling forced... Aside from the aforementioned example of a series that gets cancelled... Is when I want to play something else specifically. Either I'm really looking forward to starting a specific series and I'm just trying to get through another game to start it. Or the more likely case is that I have... Because I have multiple parallel playthroughs, one of the ongoing frustrations is that I'll want to play one of them specifically on a given day. I don't want to heal because I don't need healing, so I guess we'll go for charge. An ongoing issue that happens is that I'll uh, have a particular game I want to play that day, where like I want to binge a particular game and make some serious progress in it and stuff like that. Maybe it's because it's almost done and I just want to like shave that one off and, and get it over with. Or maybe it's just because I'm really into that particular game, like certain parts of my Zelda playthrough, I'm just like, I just want to play Zelda. Uh, when that kind of stuff happens, it can be frustrating, and that, that's when it can slightly feel like I'm forcing myself to play something else. Because it'll be like, Ugh. Like, lately, lately, lately I'm, I'm abundantly aware of how close I am to finishing Zelda, and how, and how way closer I am to finishing Mass Effect Andromeda, and I'm way closer to finishing Prey. And I'm not too far off of fishing, finishing Morrowind either, probably. So, when it's time to get around to Dr. Decker, I'm like, Ah, oh, but I kind of want to do the other things right now, because, like, I can see those credits roll. <laughs> and that'd be so satisfying, especially in the case of a game like Mass Effect Andromeda, a game that I'm kind of waiting to finish just to have it end, but also because, like, it's so long. Like, it'd be so satisfying to reach the end of Andromeda. So every time I, like, I'm like, oh, I wanted to binge another four hours of... Andromeda Day, but like I gotta do like Decker and Cube Escape because I'm out of videos on those ones are moments where that that's where like the, the slight that's the other variation of being slightly forced It doesn't actively become a negative thing necessarily, but there's just like ah, it's just that that feeling of just of resignment of like yes I do have to specifically wait for tomorrow or the next day or the next day before I can go back to this game that I'm like really particularly drawn to playing that day because the that's the and I have to I have to force myself to follow those kinds of patterns because if I don't do that then I create a problem where oh I think the plus one hit point thing doesn't actually give you a plus one hit point I think it just heals you annoying I think the uh, I have to do that kind of thing because if I don't do that kind of thing then we'd have a mess like if I maintain my six videos per day output for example but then let myself just play whatever I felt like on a given day then certain certain videos would be missing on a regular basis while other game while other games are getting like four videos a day or something like that like that's what the outcome would be so i avoid that situation and but that but to avoid that i need to just make sure that i'm like looking at my schedule and being like nope that's what we're playing this week and that's just the case and i just try to very carefully pick games that i'm not going to burn out on hopefully which is not always easy it's not always easy to know what to pick when you're a channel that does blind stuff a lot. I am not good at this game at all, but it is actually amusing. I, I'm having a, an alright time screwing around with this. That's, uh... I think that's generally the best I can do, though. Like, I, I think that's generally the best explanation I can give. What I mean, the main thing that motivates me to finish games is the fact that this is my living. And that's not like a cynical, like, oh, I have to do it because it's my job, but literally, like... Uh, I guess it's not that it, it's, it's not specifically that's my living. It's, it's specifically the fact that uh, it's my it's, it's my YouTube channel like plus or with or without the living part It's just the fact that like people are watching now 
So now there's an outside force incentivizing me to finish things I start. Because something I know about myself, and I think I've mentioned this a number of times on the channel just in general, is that I didn't really have a tendency to finish games, generally. I grew up with my brother, and we had to share our- we only had consoles generally, and we had to share them for large chunks of our childhood. So we either had to play co-op games or versus games, or we had to specifically, uh, trade off and stuff like that. One of the, one of the worst experiences when, was when our friends got us into Diablo. So we were playing Diablo 2 on a dial-up computer, and, uh... Our mom would set an egg timer, basically, and every 30 minutes we had to change who was playing. Which meant that every 30 minutes, one of us would log out, the other person would log in and play as their character for 30 minutes, then we switch back. And if we fought over it, then she would unplug the internet. <laughs> like, that kind of stuff. Because <laughs> you'd have to share your game space with another person, and that was not always easy. Pretty balloon. I have no idea what some of these things do. Let's see. Getting, getting gems causes a bolt to shoot up. That's kind of neat. That could be a li an accidental lifesaver. Uh, so... That led to a lot of childhood stuff where I wouldn't really beat games. And then when I was when I was getting into my teenage years or young adult years, I hit a point where I just had access to so many video games. Uh, I'd, I had a Gamefly subscription and I was watching sales all the time and just paying close attention to the types of stuff that exists out there. I would, just, I would get overwhelmed by choice oftentimes, and I would just never finish stuff because I always wanted... I was... Always being drawn away by novelty. I always want to play this game or that game because that's the new thing I just got. And like, a new sale would come by every week and I'd want to pick up that game and I'd want to play that on that particular week. And like, ah, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to ignore this game to finish the game I'm currently playing. Like that's just, it wouldn't be necessarily an active decision, but I'd constantly lose track of things and never finish anything. So I actually like the new state of things where I finish stuff, even if it means I have to delay things, but it, I just needed an outside force to incentivize me to, uh, to finish specific things. I'm not- I'm barely paying attention, aren't I? That was a really bad move just across the board that just happened there. Whoops. Uh, and really, uh, ever since, uh, t my late teenage years, I've gotten used to the idea of systemizing my video game playing on some meta level. Uh, the previous meta level was, uh, was, uh, ever since I encountered Bioshock for the first time, I started caring about achievements. And so that used to be what one of my motivating things and one of the things that would help me finish games or think about what I was going to play on a particular week or even think about how I was going to play a game was that I would look at the achievement list and I would be like motivated by that kind of stuff. I'm not a fan of achievements that much anymore. Um, one is that I don't really have time to achievement hunt while running a, a YouTube channel and my, and my motivations for how I play a cha uh, games and run my channel is much more motivated by the video making process now than any achievements the game happens to have. But also I found that uh, if you if you hunt for the achievements in every game you play, you often get a less enjoyable experience from a lot of those games. Uh, the best, I think the best way to get a to have fun and get achievements is to play a game from scratch, uh, from front to back, with achievement notifications turned off, not knowing what the achievements are at all, and not knowing when you're getting them. And then if you really love the game, then you can look back at the achievement list afterwards and turn the achievement list uh, notifications on, and that can be like your new motivation for playing the game again. So like if a game came out like Prey, then I would... That's neat, but I will just die. Uh, like if a game like Prey came out, I would play it totally blind and not look at the achievement list, which frankly could probably spoil stuff anyway, but also would motivate you to play the game in specific ways that's really irritating. Like, I hate stuff that's like, get a hundred kills with every single type of gun, which incentivizes you to use stuff that you don't like constantly and force yourself to play a certain way or like, obsessively try to play an entire game without getting a single alarm or kill or something in like the stealth possible games, which would be like stuff like Dishonored and Deus Ex and like forcing really stringent rules on yourself. All that kind of stuff I think is a terrible idea for your first playthrough because like they should only be there for your additional playthroughs. They should only be there uh, things you do as challenge runs in a game you're already familiar with. They should not be things that you do on your blind playthrough because playing the game naturally should be the, the enjoyable way of playing it. For your first run and doing it any other way is actually actively hindering the experience and it's often just a terrible idea and i've had i've i've heard so many stories about achievements basically ruining games for people even if they don't fully understand that that's what happened because just hearing somebody discuss going after achievements in a game that you're way more, more fully familiar with than they are can be like it's become an eye-opening thing of like wow yeah you forcing yourself to do that it's like why you didn't like the game ultimately and it was just a bad idea and so i went from 
uh, playing things for games for achievements to playing things from games for my channel. And I, I don't know. I think we just as we become adults and we get older, we come up with our own motivation systems for playing games in a, uh, in general, or we drift away from playing them, perhaps. Because if you don't have a motivation system, then uh, as you become an adult and you get busy, then it can just be very easy to do other things with your time, which is fine, obviously. <laughs> It's not like it's not like the amount of video games you play is a direct barometer of your quality as a human being. That'd be a, a, a completely insane and unhealthy uh, stance to take. But uh, there's just like a just a general thing that the more the more things that get in the way of you doing the thing you like, and the more busy you get, and the more obstacles there are, the more that you need to sort of have a system or an incentive, or, or it'll drift away entirely. Which is, and you just have to decide whether or not one or one side or the other is the more valuable approach to take, essentially. Yeah, I think that's the number of range and accuracy. That's interesting. Uh, I think that's pretty much as many tangents and nonsense. <laughs> I have a laser scope. What the fuck on my feet? <laughs> I think that's about as much of a stupid number of tangents I can do for that topic that touches upon its answer and everything related to it. But yeah, that's vaguely it. No, I don't feel burned out on video games. I generally have a good time with what I do, and I make and I make time for it because I enjoy it, and that's not really a concern. And if you wonder why I cancel specific playthroughs, then it might be specifically because that is the stuff that would have been concerning if I did keep going, and it's prob it honestly is often probably for the best. Not in some cases, like Arkham Knight got cancelled because I ran out of time, and I was working my full-time job, and it was just happenstance, coincidence, nonsense, like, I never actively cancelled Arkham Knight, but stuff like... Stuff like uh, Stranger in Sor of Sword City and Dar uh, Darkest Dungeon, uh, might have been for the best. Let's see, uh, Richard Perez Vicioso, uh, names are not easy, uh, are you interested in playing, or have you played any of the Mario RPGs? You are obviously aware of the Paper Mario series because you mentioned Grumps playing it, but does the thought of playing one for the channel cross your mind? If so, I would definitely recommend Thousand Year Door as a starting point. I'm assuming that the Thousand Year Door is what TTYD stands for, which is what they said. Uh, I don't know much of anything about... Mario RPGs, but I don't know, it's never been an appealing idea. Like, I'm sure that because it's Nintendo, it's probably a decently made game on some level, but nothing's ever really appealed to me about just even the premise of an RPG by with Mario, because I'm like, I don't care about the story of the Mario universe. I don't think that, it doesn't feel like something that I'd care about having expanded upon. And I know that they, they've got to have some sort of really strange, semi-gimmicky, like, gameplay style that's not necessarily what I'm probably usually looking for when I play RPGs. I think that at the very least they I think they're turn-based too. Uh nothing about it's been particularly appealing and I don't really I'm not going to slight the game or anything. It's just it's never drawn me in and that's just it's it's hard to exp I've I've spent like I think multiple previous episodes trying to explain that general concept. It's it's really hard to get inside your own head and try to explain why something looks overtly interesting to you or not. I'd never rule it out entirely, although there is a- I do have one disincentivization to do it, which is that, uh... It's that cross-section of being an older game, of course, and also the additional layer of, uh... On top of being an older game, it's a game that, uh, is owned by Nintendo, and that means that I, uh... It- it- it, it, it involves actively... Actively, uh... Demonetizing my own channel, basically, which is kind of rough. Like, one of the biggest disapp- one of the really big bummers right now is that I, uh... I went out and got a Switch, and I got Zelda, and I got a Pro Controller, and I, I spent all this money, and... I am not making any money on the Zelda series. Uh, so far I've made, like, four dollars total. Which is, uh, not at all comparable to the money spent to make the series in the first place. Uh, obviously I have a Patreon, which is a really big deal for making stuff like this possible, because otherwise I'd be in trouble. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not making money directly from, like, the ad revenue of the Zelda series at all. And it's, like, could actively become a problem. So, it's not that I won't ever play a Nintendo project, uh, series, but I have to think carefully about this, because, like, I'm... Right now, Zelda, in, is, in some ways, it both helps and hurts my channel, because, uh, on one hand, it's a series that 
seems to actively draw in new viewers, so it's helping my channel grow, and my existing, uh, it keeps my existing audience engaged because they enjoy the series itself, so like, there are good things happening with, with the existence of the Zelda series and stuff like that, but the series itself has generated about $4 of revenue so far, and that's because, uh, what happens is, it's honestly even hard to explain what happens, but basically, Zelda, um, Nintendo used to demonetize or even take down anything featuring their games. Things have improved slightly, and now they allow you to do this weird revenue sharing thing where they share money between you and them, and you all, like, share a cut of it or something. But it, I don't know what goes on, though, but somehow, like, the percentage... Like, the percentage is shit. Like, I should be making probably half as much as normal from doing a Zelda series than I would be, uh, if anything else, got the same number of views. But for some reason, I'm not making that much. For some reason, I'm making a basically negligible amount of money from it. Uh, and I don't really even fully understand why. It might be that... When, there, it might have something to do with the auction system. Because when you... Uh, the moment you watch a video, uh, there are there's a system on YouTube where... Uh, there's an auction held, and you can watch a CGP Grey video that actually helps explain some of the stuff, but basically, there's a, an electronic auction that is held, and all the bots that handle the advertising for all the different companies that are advertising on YouTube, and then they're dealing with their quotas and whatnot, and what demographics they want to advertise to, and stuff like that. They all basically have, like, an auction over who's going to advertise on your video in that moment to that person that's watching, and then whoever wins, wins. It, it has to do with, like, how much they're willing to pay, like, who's willing to pay the most for that particular demographic, that particular viewership, and, and advertising that particular kind of content, and stuff like that. Uh, that whole thing happens. And... I suspect that perhaps Nintendo... invites a particular demographic or something, or has certain restrictions on what type of advertisements play, that leads to basically almost no one being willing to advertise on its videos or something. Like, I don't, I don't know. But that's one, that's one hypothesis, potentially, to explain why, like, Nintendo vi videos seem to make zero money. And this is happening for me, and it's happening for Wanderbot, who also... He tested out with Twilight Princess, then also went on to play, uh, Breath of the Wild on the Switch, just like me. We both ultimately, like, we just don't make money on the series. And so, it doesn't mean that I could have to rule out Nintendo games altogether, but it does mean that I have to be responsible a little bit with how much I use Nintendo. Like, Nintendo is, like, the equivalent of, like, a form of junk food that is actively bad for you. Like, really just actively bad for you. Because, like, if I do it every now and then, it won't really hurt things, because I constantly... Like, you'll see the videos I upload on a given day and stuff like that, and you'll see that they have, like, a few hundred views on each video and stuff like that, but my channel as a whole gets tens of thousands of views per day. So, like, the video, the games I'm playing on a particular time aren't the majority of my views per day. It's actually spread across my entire channel and people are watching videos all over the place and binging it like Netflix and stuff like that. Uh, so... Playing a thing at the moment that doesn't make money doesn't actively hurt the channel in the moment. But... I have to make sure that I'm actively ma uh, playing stuff that will get views in the long term that will make money. So I have to, like, sprinkle it very carefully through the list. I have to very carefully only play Nintendo games every now and then so that they don't make up a significant percentage of the overall content on my channel because if they take- if they- if I become too much of a, hev a Nintendo heavy channel, it will actively hurt how much my, my- my income that I use to live, which is kind of a problem. I wish that wasn't the case. I wish that Nintendo would just act like every other company ever. But, uh, it, they're a pro it's a problem I have to work around and I have to be careful about any channel that threatens my- any- any company that threatens my channel in, in any real way. And Nintendo threatens me in a more passive way. Like, I am much more vindictive about somebody that threatens me actively. Like, uh, I am very unhappy with Atlas and how they treated Persona 5, and will likely never- I probably won't touch Persona 5 no matter what. Like, no matter what changes at this point, because of how they behaved around that scenario. Because that was just... Not, it was uncalled for and on some level, like... Just actively screwed up what they were doing because they were threatening to close people's channels. So, like, we were gonna issue takedowns, and we are gonna issue, like, content ID strikes. Like, uh, we are going to actively harm your channel. And, like, if a strike happens on your channel, 
basically everything can be lost. You can lose your monetization, you can lose your streaming, you can, you, you can lose thumbnails, you can lose your ability to have videos over a certain duration. Like, you, it's an active penalty because if you have a strike, then YouTube treats you like you've done something very, very wrong. Uh, I've had a strike once before, not on this channel, but on Sad Games, because the makers of a really incredibly lazily made shitty-ass indie game called Smash a Seal, which is a game that was basically that carnival game where you hit uh, whack-a-mole, but with seals, like baby seals, and I, the joke was that you were clubbing them, I guess. And it was just the dumbest, laziest joke ever, and it was also really shit gameplay that only... It, it played about as exactly like the... Uh, the uh, shoot everybody on the screen by w pressing the joystick in their direction and, and per hitting attack. That is that is in uh, Sunset Riders, that old arcade game. And that was the entire game. And it was just a really shitty Xbox Live Indie game in an ocean of other shitty Xbox Live Indie games. But they issued a strike against our channel and uh, were actively being a problem for it in a way that was actually really similar to how Jim Sterling had to deal with, with Digital Homicide. And it was, that was just an active problem, and I don't want to deal with that kind of problem ever again, so... I am... Definitely not going to deal with a company like Atlas that literally threatens to do that. And... It'd be one thing if they at least apologized, but they really didn't apologize. They basically lied. They said, we never meant to threaten everyone in the language for their new update. And also, they still, in their new update, they still don't let you beat the game. They still require you to stop doing your Let's Play series before you actually beat the game. And they still want you to not show certain things for spoiler reasons, supposedly. But they also make, but what, most, what was most insulting to me is they, out, they actively say that uh, they never meant to threaten anyone's channel. It's like, no, you meant to, th you meant to threaten people because your original email, I mean, your original comment, which is public, and we can still look at today because it wasn't edited or changed in any way, still blatantly says in all caps, like, you, you proceed at your own risk, there will be grand consequences for your channel, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, it's straight up very unambiguous threat, like, we will hurt your channel if you break our rules, and it's like, it's really fucked up language that is dangerous to my living, and in their follow-up message, like, we never meant to threaten anyone, I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> I can't deal with that level of duplicitousness. Some people say that it's because the 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 what the U.S. division of Atlas is totally is totally game with this, but it's the Japanese curmudgeonly side that's all crazy. But that doesn't that's not an excuse, and that doesn't assuage the, my fears because ultimately, if the curmudgeonly evil Japanese side is going to go crazy and destroy my channel, it doesn't really matter to me that if some other part of the company it doesn't like that. <laughs> If, it doesn't, if any part of the company is going to hurt my channel, then I don't really care that another part of the ch their company doesn't want to hurt my channel. That that just makes them like a be like the company equivalent of like a like a deranged like a it, it makes them the equivalent of like a deranged like split personality dangerous person. And it's like that them being unstable and inconsistent doesn't make that's not a point in their favor. <laughs> that just makes them seem completely insane. So, uh, Nintendo's not actively harmful in that way. Instead, they just basically kind of just take my money away that I would normally make. And that's a bummer, and it just means that, uh... It means that it actively incentivizes the world to cover their stuff less. And maybe one day they'll learn from their mistakes, and maybe they won't. They're Nintendo, they've been a profitable company since, like, the beginning of time, so they don't have to change, and they might never change. But yes, uh, there's a, you, you can actively look at most popular channels and see how Nintendo's policies hurt coverage of their games on the internet because uh, people are significantly less likely to cover a lot of Nintendo games as they come out because they just aren't a, a profitable thing. And even and even when they do cover them, they'll often make them shorter. Like you'll see how, how many people you see how many people uh, quickly skipped their way through Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild and beat it way faster than I did, and just burned through it as quickly as possible. And a lot of those people probably did that specifically because it wasn't making them money, and they needed to move on to something else because it was harmful. And like that's that's a symptom of the same problem, most likely. Although I can't speak for literally everyone in the decision-making process in a given thing, because some people just rush through everything because uh, part one of a series always has more views than parts than part fifty. So beating games quickly uh, has a better view ratio in general. Uh, but there's a lot of a lot of Nintendo's behavior incentivizes people to either not cover their games or cover their games in lower volumes or less or get to them quicker or so on. Because it's just not a profitable thing. 
And it's, it's... I wonder why they do that, because, like, I, I surely they must understand that, like, constant coverage or stuff helps them, but I guess if they, or if they're in the, I guess maybe the Nintendo just thinks that they can get away with, without that, and they think they can do better. It's, I'm dwelling on this for a, a while. But I'm getting this, I'm going into this for a reason, which is that, uh, because I have a limited bandwidth of how many Nintendo games I should cover, because my livelihood can depend on it, uh, my logic is that I need to prioritize certain games over other ones if I do cover Nintendo games, and that ties into the fact that I said earlier, like, I'm not really drawn to Paper Mario. Uh, because I'm not particularly drawn to Paper Mario, that just means that I'm much more likely to, when I do decide to cover a Nintendo game, play anything else. And that's not a slide on Paper Mario, but if I'm going to play a Nintendo game, I'm probably going to get around to something else. Like, I've never gotten around to playing... Like, I, I love Metroidvanias, and I've never played a Metroid game before. For starters, like, that's kind of a thing. Like, I'd probably... And I've always heard that Metroid uh, Prime is supposed to be a really cool, interesting 3D Metroidvania concept where they actually stuck with the general design concepts of Metroid but made it a 3D game. That sounds like it'd be a really cool, interesting thing, because I... One of my favorite things about Dark Souls is the fact that it's essentially a 3D Metroidvania, so the idea that maybe Metroid Prime might be a 3D Metroidvania too, and stuck with that general idea, might, that might be a cool trilogy to play through. And then of course, now that I've played Breath of the Wild and realized that I like it, it does, and other people are pushing a certain way, like, I've, there's an obvious temptation to go and play the other Legend of Zelda games, and maybe even play some of the really weird shit like Star Fox Adventures and weird things like that. Uh, so on the, on the list of Nintendo games I would play, which is already forced to be a limited bandwidth because of their business practices and my livelihood having just rules to how it works, uh, things are not looking great for Paper Mario. <laughs> because it's a combination of, like, I can't cover a ton of Nintendo because of their practices, and I don't think that Paper Mario would rank high on my list because I don't have any pre-existing interest in it besides some people recommending it to me sometimes. So while I won't completely count it out forever, I don't know how likely it's going to be, is my very long explanation. But hey, because I explained things this way, now you have an incredibly, incredibly long explanation for why this thing is the way it is. That is more comprehensive than it ever had to be, but I do this because it, it uh, and then I try to anticipate follow-up. I try to, I, tr I try to anticipate follow-up questions, essentially. Like, I, there's, there is a 30-second version of this answer. But now you have the third. But now you have like the five-minute ans uh, version of like the next five questions, and now that's all, hopefully taken care of. Basically, uh, in my, uh, uh, oh, here, speaking of follow-up questions, this is probably an applicable one. It is totally possible that one day I will have such a large YouTube channel or such a large Patreon following that maybe it just won't matter anymore. The Jim Sterling effect, if you will, where he's just. 100% makes his income off of Patreon and tries to actively disable all ads on all of his videos because he makes so much money from Patreon. Uh, if that happens, yes, that, be that means you become independent of this motivation system. I've been very clear about the fact that I have a specific motivation system that dictates some of my game choices and some of my practices. And if that mo if the conditions change and that motivation system changes, then yes, some of the rules behind my decision-making processes can then change because the variables are different. That said, that doesn't necessarily change the part where Paper Mario is probably one of the lower, pro lower priority games on my list uh, due to my general apathy to the concept which is not which doesn't even mean that I would dislike it if I played it I'm, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be that weirdly I would never be that weirdly single-mindedly about this that kind of thing or not weirdly single-mindedly is not a sentence that makes sense I would never be that weirdly like dedicated or stubborn to a specific answer like no I, I don't assume I won't like or won't care about Mario it's just I don't already care about Mario and it doesn't look out, out interesting from the outside but and this goes to another thing regarding, regarding Patreon. Uh, if you specifically want me to play Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, you can nominate it on Patreon. And if there is a significant portion of my audience that also is super into the idea of me playing Super uh, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, uh, then they might vote for it. And that is an entirely possible thing that will happen. I mean, it's been a constant surprise in my, my uh, Patreon series because I... Patreon led to me playing StarCraft 2, uh, Doom 26, 2015, 2016, whatever year it came out in originally, uh, Crash Bandicoot, Super Meat Boy, FTL, this war of mine. 
I can tell you the list of games from the list of Patreon winners that I would have played eventually, probably, maybe. And guess what? It's not a very big list. Like, I probably would have gotten around to playing Undertale sooner or later, because I was getting- I was hearing so much buzz around it. And I probably would have played this War of Mine sooner or later, because it looked really interesting, and I was I was really into that general premise, and, and low was I right, because that was a cool game. But so many of the Patreon winners are games that I was not even thinking about playing. And then, lo and behold, they won, and here we are, playing Morrowind, a game that I thought I'd never play, because... Frankly, I don't like the other Elder Scrolls games, so why would I like Morrowind? And turns out there's a few things to like about Morrowind, and I've got an interesting new perspective I didn't anticipate. And that kind of... And if you're wondering, that's part of what goes on with other decision-making processes, too, because... I'm playing Dr. Dr. Decker right now. Dr. Decker was specifically an example of, like, I don't know if I'd ever play this. But I just pulled the trigger on it, reflexively, and just gave it a shot. Because, uh... I should be playing like Shovel Knight and a bunch of other indie games and Hollow Knight and many other things that have been on my to-do list, but I'm like, well, let's do something weird just to try it. And so I give it a shot every now and then. So basically, there's 500 reasons why I will and won't play Paper Mario, and we won't really know until I actually do it. <laughs> but now that I've given you a long description, you can apply that description to so many other games of applicable and related topics, plus or minus the Nintendo part, depending on whether or not that's an, it's a Nintendo game you're thinking about. So there we go. I believe that was... Despite the fact it's another question about whether or not I'll play a game, I'm pretty sure I answered it in a way that added a lot of detail about stuff regarding my decision-making process that is separate from the previous topic regarding competitive games and other topics about RTSs and stuff like that. So I think I've managed to expand the issue despite answering a similar question because the game that we were talking about was demonstrably different in its situation or something like that. I can't read well. That's not- well, it's all moving. Uh, part two of his question is, I'm interested to see what other Let's Plays you watch besides Game Grumps and the uh, Two Best Friends Play. That's kind of it. Uh, I watch Game Grumps, Two Best Friends Play, Plague of Gripes, and, uh, Achievement Hunter? And that's basically it? And the amount to which I watch all of them is super variable. Uh, Let's, let's Plays are pretty low priority on my list. Uh, and I watch them for pretty similar reasons as the podcast, which is that I get drawn to a particular personality and then I want to be exposed to more of that personality. And so oftentimes, if those people have a podcast, I'll actually often drift over to their podcast at the expense of watching their other content. Because that's really the main thing I'm going for, is just the, uh, engaging with the personality and not necessarily the games. Because, uh, I don't really like to spoil myself on games, so I, won't, I don't like to watch Let's Plays of stuff that I want to play at some point, because I don't want to expose that myself to it preemptively in a way that makes me uh, miss out on the surprise and stuff like that. Game Grump circumvents that a lot because they play a lot of old games or weird games I'd never think about playing, or if they're playing a game that I'm currently playing, they only do 10 episode, vi 10, 10 minute videos, so they, freak they take an eternity compared to me, usually, and, uh... I'll generally outpace them immediately, and then it won't be a problem anyway. But, uh... Generally, I don't want to be spoiled on stuff, so... I won't watch Achievement Hunter or Best Friend play videos of stuff that I want to play at some point. Uh, which, is beco which becomes an issue. So what actually is the case is I actually don't subscribe to uh, Best Friends play at all. What I do is I bookmark them. Actually, I don't even really bookmark them, I just look them up every now and then. And I'll see if they've played a game recently that I would like to watch them play. And then I'll, then I'll go through the- I'll, uh, open up that bookmark and just keep that tab open for some big chunk of time and keep going back and watching more of that. So I don't subscribe to Best Friends probably, but because I find I don't enjoy their content on average, but instead I specifically prefer the exact context of playing- of watching them play a game that I just played myself, and while it's still fresh in my memory, and then enjoy their different, uh, playthrough of it. And so... What I did is I, I beat... I believe what I did is I beat Nier and then watched them play Nier. And then I beat, uh... I beat, uh... Deus Ex... Uh, Mankind Divided, and I watched them play Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and I... I beat Dark Souls 3, and then I watched them play Dark Souls 3, and I... Beat Resident Evil 7, and so on. And that's, that's, actually, that's actually basically the only playthroughs I've seen from them. And I had a, I had a good time with those specifically, and I like their... Takes on stuff, and I find that enjoyable. But I only really enjoy it in the context of a game I've already specifically beaten. And part of that is because they have... They're very different from Game Grumps. Game Grumps just talks about whatever. 
Part of that's a mandatory part of the structure because they're often playing a single player game while one of them's sitting there and one of them's watching. But also because one of them is a the, uh, Aaron Hansen plays basically every game himself. Where, whereas Danny is never, almost never even touching a controller, and oftentimes I get the feeling he's not even looking at the screen half the time, or only tangentially paying attention or understanding what's happening. One of the things that stands out to me is the fact that he, uh, they've played through several Souls games now to completion, and to this day, Dan still tells Aaron to save the game and pause the game, which are two things that don't exist in Dark Souls. You can't save or pause. The game constantly auto-saves all the time, and you can't pause it ever. And he still constantly tells Aaron to save or pause reflexively and doesn't pick up on the fact that that's not a thing you can do. Which shows how much he understands what's actually happening in the game half the time. Uh, and, that, and that's because their show, their show is a show you can practically almost always enjoy by not even looking at the screen. You can just listen to them talk and talk the shit. And I enjoy that. So uh, I, I'm most likely to watch their content over anyone else's just because I can do it while multitasking and have, get a similar experience and then go look at the screen when it's time to actually, like, a, a specific thing is happening all of a sudden. Um, whereas Best Friends Play is actually, they're gameplay driven the way I am. They, uh, Best Friends Play is the equivalent of when me and Andrew sit down and play a game together, which is that two, two different personalities are cut mixing together in a, in a commentary style that's very driven by the gameplay experience that's happening on the screen. So if I watch Best Friends play, it needs my full attention, and I need to have played the game already because I don't want it to be spoiled for me, and it's like such a specific scenario that I enjoy the experience when I get the chance to have it, but I've only rarely gotten to have it, and I've only had it like three or four times total so far. My, I think my favorite so far was, uh... I think my favorite so far was, uh, was specifically experiencing them do Resident Evil 7 right after I played Resident Evil 7. When I played Resident Evil 7, I got addicted to watching other people play Resident Evil 7. So I watched myself play Resident Evil 7, I watched, uh... Did Achievement Hunter play it? I think they played it too, and I watched... If, if they did, I watched them play it. Uh... And I watched Best Friends play, play Resident Evil 7, I played... I watched uh, Game Grumps play Resident Evil 7, and then... I uh, was like, hey, Angie, you want to play Resident Evil 7? And I watched him play Resident Evil 7 while sitting on the couch with him, and we recorded that, and that, that became, like, my second season of, where I, I where on my channel I uploaded a second season of Resident Evil 7, because watching people's blind playthroughs of that game is so entertaining, and it's one of the only... It's one of the... It's, it's the first game I've specifically wanted to see several people play. It's basically the only game I've ever wanted to see a whole bunch of diff different people play, Besides, until dawn and every Souls game, because of how it, how much it can be a person-to-person -person experience and how personalized the outcomes of, th of scenarios can be, and and just people's reactions to stuff because they're just a, it's a game worth reacting to because it has enough going on. Resident Evil 7 is a real gem, basically, and I'm really happy that the game happened. And we're on so many tangents now. It's fine. It's fine. Got to make these questions last because frankly they don't come in that fast. So going through them slowly is actually uh, good for the series anyway. <laughs> uh, Achievement Hunter, I only watch Minecraft. That's it. I just enjoy, I enjoy watching their Minecraft series. I think that when they do the equivalent of a, like, a, of, like, me and Andrew's, like, Let's Tries, or what he, or in, in Andrew's case, he calls it a sad quickie, because his game's channel's, his channel's called The Sad Games. I think that, uh, Achievement Hunter's one-off videos on the Let's Play channel are garbage, generally. And I am only sometimes interested in their in their Grand Theft Auto series, which is their other pro prominent one. I, I, it's super situational whether I'm going to enjoy it, and I often find that, especially since they don't do the heist videos they used to do as much, I my chance of li my, uh, liking them is significantly lower than normal. So instead, more than anything, I just watch their podcast and then their weekly Minecraft video, and that's it. And uh, in Plague of Gripes' scenario, he's the only solo uh, Let's Player I watch. I generally watch content that has that has multiple people talking together, which might come as a surprise because most of my content is me on my own. But we talked I've talked about the idea a few a few times that the exact type of content is the type is not necessarily the type of, that I enjoy specifically, but more it's more that what I make is just what I'm supposedly good at making. What comes to mind is I watched a documentary called It Might Get Loud or It Will Get Loud or something like that that featured Jack White and The Edge and was it Jimmy Page or someone from like Led Zeppelin or something? Uh, and I have been familiar with Jack White's music with the White Stripes and so on, this lo-fi garage rock. And then they go to Jack White's house and we listen to the music that they enjoy in their house. And it's so starkly different from what he makes and that fascinating d difference. 
that's what I think of when I think about what I make versus what I enjoy. Is that like, it seems to be not a completely insane thing that somebody finds their groove in something that is not completely 100% identical with exactly what they would uh, enjoy to experience outside of themselves. So I make solo content primarily and then some uh, group stuff here and there, but I actually almost exclusively enjoy group stuff. And the exception is Plague of Gripes. Plague of Gripes is somebody that I find to be exceptionally amusing and he has the very specific personality that I find to be consistently entertaining despite being completely alone. Some sort of dry sarcasm mixed with a dark humor here and there and something about it's very appealing. He's not a Let's Player though, primarily. His channel is covered with uh, speed paint, not speed paints, he doesn't do speed paints. Uh, he, he, him discussing art style things and sh uh, discussing what, how he paint certain ideas or how he's like this is how I paint a sunset and I'm gonna gripe about it. he does things called art gripes or something like that where he discusses ins and outs and stuff about how he draws specific things and it's because his channel its primary call to fame is that he's an animation channel and he makes animations but one of his promises for make, getting patreon follow uh, following was to do a Dark Souls let's play so he has a really good Dark Souls 1 let's play and he's in the middle of doing another one uh, I've fallen behind on that stuff, though, because his videos are gargantuan and super long, and so I have to put them on my watch later list and get around to them, so... While I say I like it, I've only watched, like, 15-ish parts so far, which is hours and hours of video, but I'm very behind, and I can't, I can't even start his next one yet, because I want to finish the previous one first. But those are, my, those are more or less the ones. So, of them, none of them are, none of them are that consistent. Uh... Basically, I tend to watch about 10 minutes of Game Grumps a day, because I often don't care about one or one or more of the things they're uploading. Uh, I only watch one Achievement Hunter video a week. I watch game- I, I eventually get around to Plague of Gripes when I feel like it, and I'm like, oh, it's time to finally crack open another one of those long-ass episodes. And, uh... I get around to watching uh, Best Friends play in the very specific context of noticing that one of their ongoing recent series is something that I specifically want to exper uh, experience their take on, usually having recently played it myself. So on average, this means that aside from the one Game Grumps video, uh, aside from the one Minecraft video a week, I'm basically watching one episode of Game Grumps a day and then no other Let's Plays. And that's just the normal for me. And that's because... What I actually like to watch, uh, aside from, I, I have, uh, two primarily thing- I have two primary things I like to watch on average, which is I watch, uh... I watch video essays, and I watch science videos, basically. Or stuff that can tangentially be called science in some cases, so I'll watch, uh, Veri uh Veritasium and Smarter Every Day and CGP Grey and Slow Mo Guys, and that's why I, that's why I say tangentially science is Slow Mo Guys in particular. Uh, like, I'll watch a lot of informative stuff, and then I'll watch analysis videos and, crit and critique videos. So, that'll be... Well, there's a lot of video essay channels. One of the m recent ones that I've been cool to f uh, happy to find over the last year is Joseph Anderson. Does these gargantuan mega videos where he really goes in deep. Uh, but it's very hard to recommend video essay channels because there's so many of them out there. I also quite like Super Bunny Hop. Uh, if you want to find out... If you want to find out about a bunch of video essay channels, actually, the best way to do this without me trying to recall them right now, because I love video essay ch channels, which is, you know, those videos where, like, somebody talks about a game for, like, or movie or whatever for, like, 45 plus minutes of this big work, this big prep thing. It's like, some, some people would call them reviews, but they're really not reviews specifically, but more or less just, like, a very long form critique slash discussion of a concept. And they're really, really interesting stuff, and it's probably... And I think a lot of that bleeds through with, with the rants that I'm often willing to do is because I'm often, like, channeling that kind of idea of, like, this long-form critique, especially when the credits roll at the end of a game that I have a lot to say about. Uh, if you want to find out what the, what the stuff is I like without me having to really haphazardly try to remember them and to recite them to you right now, uh, you should actually have, head over to our, my Discord in the description of every... It should be in the description of this video. It's on the description of, like, every video. There's an invite to my Discord channel. And I created a sub-channel recently called, uh, uh, Keith Recommends. And it's just, I just, I, I'm trying to post at least one video of each of the different video essay channels that I enjoy over to Keith Recommends. And, uh, so if you scroll through that private channel, which everyone can view, but no one besides me can actually post links and comment in, uh, you can go through this big backlog of, of a bunch of the different channels I watch, which are not Let's Play channels generally, and... Boy, oh boy, will you have 
a lot to watch. <laughs> There's a lot of content in there. I'm still working through a lot of it myself. But that's that's the more average experience that I, of what I watch, is I am often burning through backlogs of stuff like that instead of, uh, instead of specifically trying to uh, double up on Let's Play stuff. And I think that also might be informed to some extent by the fact that the, the, the earlier thing I talked about, which is the, uh, the fact that I play enough video games myself that I don't necessarily have an active drive to play even more of them when, I'm, when it's not time to play them is that uh, that might inform some of my Let's Play tendencies, because people... Let's Plays are apparently popular. Popular enough that I, even me as a lower unit person can somehow make an, a living off of their meager subscriber count uh, by doing them. Uh, like, clearly there's an audience for this stuff. But in my case, I think I just play so many video games myself, and also make Let's Plays myself, that I don't have a huge hunger to experience that particular form of media because I think that by the time it's time to make decisions, much like the topic of playing games in my free time, I think I also don't have as much incentive to uh, play, uh, to watch Let's Plays in my in my free time for the same reason. That's probably what's going on there. Anyway, that was like two people's questions, so that was some of the most long-winded stuff. This is actually, the, I think this is the uh, record so far for least questions answered per episode. I'm looking at this big text document I have in the other window that has a bunch of other questions lined up by a bunch of you, so I'm not forgetting about them. Except that one person, uh, Nox, asked, asked a question about my daily routine, but I'm pretty sure that during, was it, what was it, the, uh... Was it the, was it the Defense Grid video where I talked about my daily routine? Someone asked me a question about my work, how, I, how I'm able to finish so many videos, or why other people can't, or something like that. And I think I basically ended up lining out my my daily routine. Uh, feel free to tell me if that wasn't a satisfying answer at the time, but I think I already answered that question relatively extensively, so I chose to skip that particular question for that reason. But aside from that, um, aside from that, I'm, I'm I have all these questions backlogged in documents to get around to sooner or later. So I hope you guys continue to enjoy this meandering rant thing where somebody asks one question and then I answer 15 prospective questions related to that question then talk about Atlas for a while apparently. But uh, here we go. See you guys next week in another game. Uh, gotta figure out what I'm gonna play next. <laughs> I don't actually, I, I need to generate a list of games to play for the series that fit this kind of idea. Probably just gotta find all the arcade stuff in my cat in my catalog that I wouldn't other play otherwise go find some smash tv type stuff <laughs> or more weird zen things but those are harder to think of uh thanks for watching like always guys feel free to send your questions to keith ballard questions at gmail.com i'm generally answering them in a vaguely chronological order so you can get it if you asked some of these questions a while ago you might have some idea of how backlogged they are right now from how long ago you asked it originally but if a if there's a particular one that i have I want to get to right away. I will not hesitate to just put it at the front of the list. So if you've got a really burning, interesting question, I might agree and put it at the top of my list. It's happened a few times already. I have complete control over the order I answer these in. Uh, in fact, uh, just to get to it really quick, uh, Charlie the Unicorn had a, was asking, like, do you have rules about how many questions one person can ask or... Or, or does it not matter as long as they're interesting or, or paraphrasing a little bit. It went off the screen because it wasn't framed on my screen very well. Uh, there, there's no limit on how many questions people can ask. It's fine. But if you are spamming questions constantly, I might prioritize other people's over yours if at, at the, to avoid necessarily asking answering the same person's questions every episode for five episodes straight or something like that. I might selectively go in and out of answering your questions periodically on purpose. It is nice if people can condense their questions into one email as opposed to several emails that are sent the same day. Uh, I understand the idea of having different questions come up over the course of weeks, but some people send like four four emails in the same day, and that seems a little unnecessary. Uh, maybe they each thought each time that it was going to be the last one. But yeah, send your questions to KeithBallardQuestions at gmail.com. Thanks for watching like always. Check out the playlist if you want to have even more ranting videos like this, because there's been a number of them now, like... Is this number 14 or something? It might be number 14. I think it's number 14. Uh, see you guys next time.